Welcome back. Let's start with this example. We have the integral of e to the power of x divided by 5 dx. And so in order to integrate an exponential function with a base of e, we're going to need to know this integration rule right here. We know that the integral of e to the power of x dx is equal to e to the power of x plus c. And so in this case, if we pull this constant multiple of 1 fifth to the outside of the integral, we will have that this is equal to 1 fifth times the integral of e to the power of x dx. And so using this rule, we know that the integral of e to the x times dx is e to the power of x plus c. And so this will be equal to 1 fifth times e to the power of x plus c. And that is the antiderivative or the solution to this integral. Next, we have the integral of e to the power of 7x plus 2 dx. And so for this integral, we're going to need to use u substitution. So anytime you see e to the power of some function that isn't x, that's a good indicator that you might want to use u substitution and you might want to set that exponent equal to u. And so in order to do that, we need to know a variation of the integration rule that we used in the previous example. Here we have that the integral of e to the power of u du is equal to e to the power of u plus c. And so in order to use this rule, we are going to need to set our exponent equal to u. And so let's do that. We'll have u is equal to 7x plus 2, and then we're going to want to take the derivative of that. So we will have du dx is equal to 7, right? The derivative of 7x is just 7 because when you have x to the power of 1, the derivative is just the coefficient. And so in this case, that is 7. And the derivative of 2 is just 0 because the derivative of any constant is 0. And so if we solve for du by multiplying both sides by dx, we will have that du is equal to 7 dx. OK, and so when you use u substitution, whatever is on this side of this equation, whatever du is equal to, you want to try and see if that can be found in your integral. And so I don't see a constant multiple of 7 in this integral, but I do see dx. And so what I'm going to do is divide both sides by 7, and so then we'll have that du divided by 7 is equal to dx. And so now you'll notice that on this side of the equation we have dx, which we can find in our integral here, which means that we can replace it by this du term. In this case, it's du divided by 7. And so now we can rewrite this integral in terms of u. We will have that this is equal to the integral of e to the power of u times du divided by 7, right? So all we did was replace 7x plus 2 with u because that's what we set it equal to. So we just have e to the power of u. And then we replaced dx with what we found that that was equal to du divided by 7. And so now if we pull this 1 7th to the outside of the integral, we'll have that this is equal to 1 7th times the integral of e to the power of u du. And now we can use this rule right here that the integral of e to the power of u du is equal to e to the power of u plus c. And so this will be equal to 1 7th times e to the power of u plus c. And then our last step is just to replace u with what we set it equal to. And so we set it equal to 7x plus 2. And so our final answer is that this is equal to 1 7th times e to the power of 7x plus 2 plus c. And so that is the antiderivative of this function or the answer to our integral. For our next example, we have a definite integral. We have the integral from 0 to the square root of 3 of x times e to the power of x squared divided by 3 times dx. And so for this example, we are going to want to use u substitution because we have e to the power of some function that is not just x, right? We have e to the power of x squared divided by 3. And so in most cases, when you see this, you're probably going to want to set that exponent equal to u. But what you want to make sure of when you do that is that the derivative of that exponent is somewhere in your function. And so let's see if that holds true. Let's set u equal to x squared divided by 3. And then let's take its derivative and see if we can find that in our integral. And so we'll have du divided by dx is equal to the derivative of x squared divided by 3. And so we're going to need to use the power rule here. So we will first multiply that 2 down and then subtract 1 from the exponent. And so we will have that 1 third times 2 times x to the first power, right? If we subtract 1 from 2, we're left with a power of 1. And so now, ignoring this constant multiple of 1 third times 2, do we see x somewhere in this integral? 
and it looks like it is right here. And so we're good. We have a function and its derivative in our integral, and so we are allowed to use u substitution. And so now let's solve for du here. Let's multiply both sides by dx, and so we'll have that du is equal to 2 thirds x times dx, right? I also multiplied 2 times 1 third to get 2 thirds. But now if you look at what is on this side of the equation, I don't see a 2 thirds x dx in our integral. I just see an x and a dx. And so I'm going to divide both sides by 2 thirds, which would be the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of that fraction, which would be 3 halves. And so we will have 3 halves times du is equal to x dx. Okay, and so then we're going to be able to replace x times dx in our integral here with this du term. All right, and so let's rewrite this integral in terms of u. We will have that this is equal to the integral from x equals 0 to x equals the square root of 3, right? Remember that when you use u substitution for a definite integral, you need to keep track of what your bounds are values of. And these bounds are values of x because our original integral is in terms of x right? They are defined with x and not u, but then if we rewrite the rest of our integral in terms of u, we will have e to the power of u times 3 halves du, okay? So we replaced x squared divided by 3 with u because that's what we set it equal to, so we have e to the power of u, and then we replaced x times dx with what we set that equal to. And so now if we bring this 3 halves out to the front of the integral, we'll have that this is equal to 3 halves times the integral, from x equals 0 to x equals the square root of 3 of e to the power of u du. And so we know the integral of e to the power of u du is just going to be e to the power of u, and we can drop the plus c because we're working with a definite integral here, and so this will just be equal to 3 halves times e to the power of u from x equals 0 to x equals the square root of 3. Okay, and so then what we're going to want to do is replace u with what we set it equal to, and then we can evaluate our antiderivative from 0 to the square root of 3. And so this will be equal to 3 halves times e to the power of x squared divided by 3 evaluated from 0 to the square root of 3. Right, I dropped the x equals for our bounds because now our function is defined with x again, and so we don't need to worry about plugging our bounds into our function at the wrong time. Right, we didn't want to plug them in for u because these are values of x. But now since our function is defined with x, we can plug these in to that function. All right, and so if we clean up our work here, we can now evaluate this antiderivative from 0 to the square root of 3. And so this will be equal to 3 halves times the square root of 3 plugged into our function. So we will have e to the power of the square root of 3 squared divided by 3 minus 0 plugged into our function. And so we will have e to the power of 0 squared divided by 3. And so now if we simplify, the square root of 3 squared is just going to be 3 because when you square a square root, the square root and the square cancel out. And so you'll just be left with 3 divided by 3. And so this is equal to 3 halves times e to the power of 3 divided by 3, which 3 divided by 3 is just 1. So I'll rewrite that to be 1. And so we'll have 1 and then minus e to the power of 0 squared divided by 3. Now 0 squared is 0 and 0 divided by 3 is still 0. And so we have e to the power of 0. And so, I'll continue our work up here. This will be equal to 3 halves times e to the first power, so that's just e, and then we will be subtracting e to the power of 0, which e to the power of 0 is just 1. And so this is a perfectly acceptable answer for your definite integral. But if you wanted to know the approximate value, that would approximately be equal to 2.577 and some more decimals. But either way, this is the answer to this definite integral. So for our next example, we have the integral of negative e to the power of one divided by x divided by x squared dx. And so how are we going to integrate this function? Well, notice that we have e to the power of some function that is not just x. And so we're probably going to want to use u substitution here. And so to kind of help you visualize how we're going to do that, remember that one divided by x is the same as x to the negative first power. Right, so we could rewrite this to be x to the negative first power. And in the same manner, we can move this x squared out of the denominator to the numerator if we give it a negative exponent. Right, so we could rewrite this integral to be equal to the negative integral. Right, I'm just going to pull this negative to the outside. 
and then we will have x to the negative second power times e to the power of x to the negative first power, and then we'll have dx, right? And so if we're going to use u substitution for this integral, we want to make sure that we see a function and its derivative, and we will set that function equal to u. And so most likely we're going to want to set the function in the exponent of e equal to u. And so let's see if the derivative of x to the negative first power is in this integral. Remember that if you take the derivative of x to some power, that power is going to decrease by one via the power rule. And so if we subtract one from this exponent, we will get x to the negative second power, which is right here, right? So if we set u equal, to x to the negative first power, then du dx, the derivative, will be equal to this exponent multiplied down. So we'll have negative one times x to the power of negative one minus one, which would be negative two. And so if we multiply dx to both sides, we'll have that du is equal to negative x to the negative second power dx. And so now look at our integral over here. We have negative x to the negative second power dx and so we can replace all of that with du and replace our power with u. And so then this whole integral will be in terms of u. And so this will be equal to the integral of e to the power of u du. Okay, and so then we know that the integral of e to the power of u du is e to the power of u plus c. And so this will be equal to e to the power of u plus c. And then all we have to do now is replace u with what we set it equal to. And so we'll have that this is equal to e to the power of x to the negative first power plus c. And so then we can rewrite this x to the negative first power to just be one divided by x, right? We're just gonna move this x to the denominator of this exponent. And so that will make its exponent positive. And so if we do that, we will just have one divided by x as our exponent. And this will be our final answer. This is the antiderivative of this function. So for our next example, we have the integral of e to the power of x times cosine of e to the power of x times dx. And so for this integral, because we have a composite function here, where we have this exponential function e to the power of x inside the cosine function, that means we're probably going to need to use u substitution. And so when you use u substitution, you typically want to look for a function and its derivative, which in this case, we know that e to the power of x is its own derivative, right? If you take the derivative of e to the power of x, you get back e to the power of x. And so in this specific integral, we do have a function and its derivative. Here's the function and here is the derivative. And so if we set u equal to e to the power of x, and remember, we're gonna be setting e to the power of x inside the cosine function equal to u, then that means that du dx, the derivative of u will be equal to e to the power of x, and so then if we multiply both sides by dx, we will have that du is equal to e to the power of x dx. And so now if I look for what is on this side of the equation in our integral, I see e to the power of x and dx. And so I'll be able to replace both of those with du. And so we can rewrite this integral and have that this is equal to the integral of cosine of u du, right? We replaced e to the power of x with u because that's what we set it equal to and we replaced e to the power of x times dx with du. And so now we just have the integral of cosine u du, which we know that the integral of cosine is sine, and so this is equal to sine of u plus c. But we're not quite done yet. We have to replace u with what we set it equal to, which is e to the power of x. And so our final answer is that this is equal to sine of e to the power of x plus c. And so that is the antiderivative or the final answer to this integral. All right, so next up we have the integral of the natural log of e to the power of three x minus one dx. And so this initially looks like a very complex integral, right? We might think that we wanna use u substitution here because we have this composite function, but if you set u equal to that inside function, the derivative isn't going to be anywhere else in this integral right? When you use u substitution, you want to find a function and its derivative. And so we can't do that in this case, but in fact, this is a lot easier than it seems. Remember that the natural log function and the exponential function with a base of e are inverse functions. And so what that means is that if you have the natural log of e to the power of x, the natural log undoes the exponential function, and this is just equal to x. 
right? So another way of thinking about it is that the natural log and E cancel out and you're just left with whatever is in the exponent of E. And so in this case, the natural log and E are going to cancel out. And so really we just have the integral of three X minus one, right? That is what we have right here. The natural log and E cancel out, and so we're just left with that exponent of 3x minus 1. And so now this is a fairly basic integral that we should know how to integrate using the power rule of integration. And so this will be equal to 3 times x to the power of 1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus 1 minus x. Right, so if you use the power rule on x, we add 1 to the exponent, so we have 1 plus 1, and then we divide by that new exponent of 1 plus 1, and then we will subtract the integral of one, which remember when you integrate a constant, you just multiply by the variable that you are integrating with respect to, which in this case is x. And so we multiply negative one by x to get negative x. And then of course, don't forget to add plus c. All right, and so then if we simplify, this will be equal to three x squared divided by two minus x plus c. And that is the antiderivative of this function. Okay, so don't get tripped up by seeing the natural log of e to some power within an integral. Just know that the natural log in e will cancel out. So here we have the integral of e to the power of x plus e to the power of negative x divided by e to the power of x minus e to the power of negative x times dx. And so how do you think we are going to integrate this function? But what I want you to remember is something about the function e to the power of x. Remember that when you take the derivative of that function, e to the power of x, that is equal to e to the power of x. And so we can probably use u substitution for this integral because we have a function and its derivative between the denominator and the numerator of our function here. And so let me show you what I mean. If we set u equal to the denominator, we will have e to the power of x minus e to the power of negative x and we take the derivative of that, we will have du dx is equal to the derivative of e to the power of x, so that's just e to the x, minus the derivative of e to the power of negative x, and so that's going to be e to the power of negative x times the derivative of negative x, which is negative one. And so then this negative one and this negative right here would become positive, and so that means that du dx will be equal to e to the power of x plus e to the power of negative x. And look at this derivative right here. This is exactly the same as what is in our numerator. And so if we multiply dx to both sides of this, we will have that du is equal to e to the power of x plus e to the power of negative x times dx. And so we can use u substitution for this integral by replacing the denominator with u and the numerator and dx with du. And so let's do that. We'll have that this is equal to the integral of one divided by u times du. And so now this is why I set the denominator equal to u and not the numerator. I knew that if I set the denominator equal to u, we would get this as our integral in terms of u, which we know how to integrate using the log rule of integration, right? Remember that the integral of one divided by u du is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. This is a rule of integration that we know that we can use right here. Okay, so when you have a choice between setting the numerator or the denominator equal to u, you want to set the denominator equal to u because that is more likely to lead you to this form of an integral that you then know how to integrate. Okay, and so this will be equal to the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c and then all we have to do to finish off this integral is to replace u with what we set it equal to. And so if I erase this rule here, we will have that this is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of e to the power of x minus e to the power of negative x and then plus c. And so that is the antiderivative of this function or the solution to our integral. All right, and so with that, that is all I had for this example's video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments, but if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now, so I will see you next time.